dear students of class 8a and 8b today's topic topic number decline of the mughals and rise of independent kingdoms chapter number 6 look at it today i shall describe about the states as i mentioned in the board and their rulers first bengal i am going to re explain about bengal during the period of the mughals bengal was a place bengal was a state during mughal period considered to be one of the richest provinces of india muhammad you know during the period of the mughals murshid quli khan became the diwan of bengal murshid quli khan brought a remarkable change in the entire administrative structure uh, during that period in bengal he reorganized the revenue system established law and order strictly maintained it and at the same time murshid quli khan shifted his capital from dhaka to murshidabad earlier the name of <coughs> murshidabad was muksudabad but murshid quli khan by shifting his capital from dhaka to muksudabad named it murshidabad then muksud then the name a uh, change from muksudabad to murshidabad bengal became one of the richest provinces during 18th century under murshid quli khan's uh, khan's rule and murshid quli khan although murshid quli khan freed himself from the control of the mughals yet he um, uh, you know maintained peaceful relations with the mughal emperors and succeeded in bringing prosperity throughout the country throughout the state during that that period murshid quli khan was succeeded by his son in law sujauddin or sujauddin khan sujauddin khan was a great patron of art culture and learning sujauddin sujauddin khan was succeeded by his son uh, you know uh, his son named sarfaraz khan sarfaraz khan uh, was not uh, was not a skillful ruler sarfaraz khan was more inclined towards religion than administration and hence his tenure became his tenure came to an end within within one year that means he ascended the throne in the year 1739 and uh, ruled till 1740 within one year his rule his tenure came to an end only because of his inefficiency uh, only, only because of his uh, weakness only because of his uh, because of his uh, you know uh, only because of his indisciplined attitudes towards the nobles and only because of his impatience these were the qualities which the qualities of a, all good qualities which a ruler should have he did not have it that's why his tenure had become a very shorter than others than his the previous ruler uh, sujauddin khan his father and his grandfather you know murshid quli khan in the battle of giria in the battle of giria he was defeated by the governor of patna alivardi khan the governor of patna alivardi khan by defeating sarfaraz khan in the battle of giria in the year 1740 <clears throat> he came to power he ascended the throne of bengal and became bengal became the nawab of bengal on being the nawab of bengal <clears throat> alivardi khan established a strong administration throughout bengal throughout the state bengal and he also treated the hindus and muslims alike 
Besides, you know, he gave importance to trade and commerce and maintained good relationship with the Europeans, but he did not allow them to be powerful uh, in Bengal because he thought that the Europeans had come to Bengal to trade with, with, with them, but not to increase their military presence. And next one, Sirajuddullah. Sirajuddullah was the grandson of whom? He was the grandson of Nawab Ali Wardi Khan. He ascended the throne after the death of his grandson, grandfather Ali Wardi Khan, but on being the Nawab of Bengal, Bihar and Orisha at a tender age, what qualities he should have, he lacked it. And ultimately, he neglected the army, he neglected the, you know, policy of maintaining good relationship with the nobles. As a result, he was unable, he was unable to understand uh, the, you know, the, he was unable to uh, feel the pulse of British East India Company. And as a result of it, British East India Company realized that Nawab Sirajuddullah was a very immature ruler and started plotting against him. Ultimately, they met in the Battle of Plassey in the year 1757, where Nawab Sirajuddullah was defeated and Bengal came under the control of British East India Company. So the, 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 that very, you know, uh, richest province, richest state of the Mughals passed into the hands of the British. The next one, Ayod. Ayod was a state covered with the modern day districts of, uh, you know, uh, modern day districts of Kanpur, Lucknow, Faizabad, Ayodhya and Baranasi in Uttar Pradesh. It was a state Mughal Emperor Muhammad Shah appointed Sadat Khan as its governor. But Sadat Khan on being the governor of the state applied his intelligence because he was not only a, an intelligent a ruler but also a very courageous and hence he soon rose to become a very powerful governor in Ayod. Uh, he soon declared himself independent and took charge. He took charge of political, military and financial control of the state Ayod. And uh, afterwards, Sadat Jan, who was the son-in-law of uh, Sadat Khan, after the death of him, Sadat Khan, uh, Sadat Jan came to power. And during the period of Sadat Khan, I had witnessed great prosperity. Law and order also was greatly improved because Sadat Jan uh, was trained by his, uh, you know, father-in-law. Uh, Sadat Khan, Sadat Khan uh, trained Sadat Jang, his son-in-law, from the very, very beginning, considering himself to be the next ruler after his death. And ultimately, Sadat Jang strictly followed the principles and ideals of his father-in-law, uh, uh, you know, Sadat Khan. As a result, during the reign of Sadat Jang, their law and order was strictly maintained. People enjoyed a sound administration. And then uh, army also was reorganized. Many fertile neighboring lands, uh, you know, were brought under Ayod's control. And trade also, trade and commerce also was flourished. And uh, Lucknow, the capital city of Ayod, Lucknow, earned for itself a distinct culture like in the field of art, dance, uh, culture, uh, uh, you know, learning every in every field. Lucknow, the capital city of Ayod, had become famous. It also became the seat of learning. Not only that, art and architecture also flourished during this period under Sadat Jang. The Bara Imambara in Lucknow is an example of the new architectural form. It developed in Ayod during the year, during the during 18th century. The next one, Hyderabad. 
Hyderabad, it was a state, Hyderabad was a, was a state founded by Mir Kamaruddin Khan. Mir Kamaruddin Khan was the most powerful Mughal in the court of the Mughals. He was appointed by Muhammad Shah, Mughal, sorry, he was appointed by Mughal Emperor Farooq Siyar. Farooq Siyar appointed him to be the, you know, uh, powerful, uh, powerful, uh, appointed to be the, uh, to be the ruler of uh, Hyderabad. He was actually powerful noble, but because of his uh, talents, because of his skills, amiability, he attracted the impression, he attracted, the, he attracted uh, Farooq Siyar, Mughal Emperor, and hence Farooqsia <coughs> allowed him to be the uh, to be the ruler of uh, Hyderabad, and he was appointed the governor of Deccan. Already he was appointed, but uh, you know, Kamaruddin Khan was one of the most powerful nobles in the court of Mughal Emperor Farooqsia. In the Mughal during the period of Mughal Emperor Farooqsia, Kamaruddin Khan was was only a noble. Although he was a noble in the court of the Mughal Emperor Farooq Siyar, but yet Farooq Siyar, Kamaruddin Khan left no stone unturned uh, to be attracted by Mughal Emperor Farooq Siyar. That's why Farooq Siyar gave him honor, a good position during his period, but ultimately uh, he uh, gave a good impact, but ultimately he communicated a message to the next ruler that uh, Kamaruddin Khan would become a, a good ruler after his death. So when Muhammad Shah became the Mughal Emperor, Muhammad Shah appointed Kamaruddin Khan to be the governor of Deccan. He overthrew the Said brothers who Kamaruddin Khan. Kamaruddin Khan overthrew the Said brothers. Said brothers were known as kingmakers. But Mir Kamaruddin Khan overthrew them and ultimately you know uh, he was conferred with many many titles Mir Kamaruddin Khan was conferred with many many titles given by the Mughal emperors from time to time from Aurangzeb to Muhammad Shah they gave many titles to Mir Kamaruddin Khan and like Chin Kulich Khan Nizam Mulk and Asab Asab Shah respectively. Aurangzeb gave him the title Chin Kulich Khan, then Farooq Siyar gave him the title Nizam ul Mulk, and then Muhammad Shah Asaf Zah. He founded the Asaf Zahi dynasty and governed the Deccan as an independent ruler. In the year, uh, he consolidated his hold over the region, checked the growing powers of the Marathas. The province made remarkable progress during his time. And this rule, during his rule, Mir Kamaruddin Khan uh, was able to establish a very good administration. His successors were known as Nizams and after his death, Mir Kamaruddin Khan, his uh, descendants were involved in the struggle of succession. The Marathas took its advantage. The internal problems of, uh, of Hyderabad encouraged the Marathas. So Marathas took its advantage and then they attacked Hyderabad and uh, impose their, their taxes chowed on the state but the British company who checked the Nizams from marching towards the Coromandel coast which was a rich textile promoting area textile uh, producing area even though the growth of Hyderabad was obstructed by the Marathas and the British it remained an important important en entity in the Deccan but both the two powers, the Marathas and the British, had been waiting to occupy their position, to our hold their holds, uh, uh, towards hold their holds towards that very state, Hyderabad. But Hyderabad remained an important entity in the Deccan. Next one, Mysore. Mysore was a state. It was a powerful state after the disintegration of the Vijayanagara Empire in the 17th century. And next, Mysore ultimately had become a very successful independent state after the disintegration of Vijayanagara Empire under the leadership of Hyder Ali. 
either under the leadership of Hyder Ali Mysore soon Mysore soon emerged as one of the most powerful kingdoms in South India during the 18th century. But Hyder Ali began his career as a foot soldier. But in course of time, Hyder Ali proved himself to be a very prominent, prominent figure in uh, uh, Mysore politics. Ultimately, in the year 1761, he became the ruler of Mysore. And he kept the rebellious, rebellious zamindar because the zamindars who had been agitating against uh, the against the rule of Hyder Ali, in order to achieve their growing uh, growing influence, Hyder Ali decided to uh, to uh, to crush their you know rebellions. So the rebellious zamindars were crushed by Hyder Ali. But he was also able to set up uh, a modern arsenal at Dindugal with the help of the French. Hyder Ali decided to introduce a system of modern technique uh, in, in his army. He wanted to give the, he wanted to provide modern modern training, modern training, modern style of uh, war, modern style of warfare uh, in his army. That's why he introduced many. He introduced the French military officers to provide them training, so that they could fight against the foreign uh, fight against the you know uh, Britishers. And by the year 1769, uh, the first Anglo Mysore War, which was held, the soldiers under Hyder Ali they fought bravely, and under his supervision, Mysore grew into such a prosperous and strong kingdom. Ultimately, because of uh, Haider, Haider's good leadership and well-trained soldiers by the French military commanders, his army defeated the British forces in the first Anglo-Mysore War, which was held in the year 1769, my dear students. His son, Tipu Sultan, uh, proved to be an only son of his only father, and he came to be known as the Tiger of Mysore. That very son Tipu Sultan continued to keep the British forces at bay. He was strongly inspired by the French Revolution and also was inspired by the ideals uh, of his father Haidar and decided not to make any compromise, not to make any, uh, not to make any understanding uh, uh, between himself and the British. That's why the economy of the uh, kingdom also flourished and gave he gave it importance to agriculture, modern trade, and industry. He felt that economic stability should be strengthened. Otherwise, he would be unable to fight against uh, the foreign trade, uh, foreign rulers, uh, especially the British. That's why in the year 1799, uh, while uh, he did not he did he was committed to his duties and responsibilities, and he decided not to uh, not to make any understanding any alliance with the British. That's why uh, in the year 1799, my dear students, while fighting against the British, while defending, defending his capital, Seringapatam, against the British, that very personality, Hyder Ali's son, Tipu Sultan, died. And last one, the Rajputs. The Rajputs, you know, from the very, very beginning, during the period of Akbar, had great faith on the Mughals, great faith on the Mughals. The Mughals also had great faith on the Rajputs because Akbar adopted the policy of matrimony, matrimonial alliance with the Rajputs. That's why the Rajputs also were given many responsibilities in administration and in military department. That's why the Rajputs had great respect for Akbar. But that very race, Rajput, also were very much arrogant in their nature and habit. But this arrogancy was, this arrogancy of the Rajputs, the Rajputs, another Mughal ruler Aurangzeb could not understand. So that's why when the Orthodox Aurangzeb ascended the throne, many, many 
many of the Rajputs revolt against him. And the Rajput states of Jaipur, Jodhpur and Udaipur, they took advantage of the growing weakness of the Mughal Empire. After Aurangzeb and declared their independence by the 18th century, by the 18th century most of the Rajput states had become independent and Ambad ruled by Swai Raja Jai Singh was the most renowned. The Rajput rulers could not unite form an empire. It was the most important drawback in the in the history of India, the Rajputs could not get themselves united. That's why they could not make an independent state, independent rule throughout the country. India, each state had their own individual goals and interests which, which often caused conflicts among themselves. That's why the corruption in the Mughal courts, which, uh, uh, which uh, was seen, the Rajputs could not take its advantages. Ultimately, the British East India Company took for, uh, marched forward and took its advantages of the vulnerable um, advantages and then they were able to establish their control over the Rajput states, the Rajput, Rajput, uh, the Rajput ruling areas and the Rajput rulers were unable to check the growing influence of the British. Up to this, my dear students, next day, the remaining part. Thank you.